know that daily while it is culture day lest any of you be had the hinder through the deceitfulness of sin sin does not only give us guilt and condemnation it gives us hardness of heart sin it gives us a seared conscience sin it gives us hardness of heart and then we can do everything we think with uh, uh, without impunity that is we don't fear we, we don't even think of what god can do god has come out of the equation of the life of the person that sins and sins and sins and he says that's me if you want to accept me accept me as i am i may but heaven will not accept you as a dirty sinner as a defiled sinner as a defiant sinner as an abandoned adamant sinner stubborn sinner heaven will not accept you just as you are it takes a change of heart a change of life it takes holiness before we can get to heaven but exalt one another daily while it is called today lest any of you lest any of you be hiding through the deceitfulness of sin look at verse 14 in verse 14 for we are made partakers of christ if and people think there's no condition. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm saved forever. We need to qualify that you are saved forever if you keep on obeying the Lord. You're saved forever and you're on your way to Canaan if like Caleb and Joshua, you keep on moving without copying the people that are adamant in their sins. It says, for we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast, until the end if we hold the beginning the beginning of our conviction the beginning of our confession the beginning of our conversion the beginning of our believing in the lord we hold that steadfast until the end and there are things that you would like to you know make you not hold the beginning of conviction the beginning of conversion at the beginning of your courage at the beginning of your call steadfast until the end you know they are careless can you be careless too no i can't no, I can't. Why? Because there's a condition. I must hold the beginning of my confidence, conviction, consecration, steadfast until the end. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Verse 16, it says, For some when they had heard, did provoke how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses then in verse 17 it says for with whom but with whom was he grieved 40 years it was was it not what them that had sinned grieved grieved because they had sin, would you understand? The father becomes grieved. I am grieved and I repent of, I regret my creating them, Genesis chapter 6. And then grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit too can be grieved. And Jesus looking at them was grieved because of their unbelief. The father can be grieved. The Son can be grieved. The Holy Ghost can be grieved. And when people, they, they, just, they just live anyhow. I'm born again. They live anyhow. I'm saved. They live anyhow. And they do. Even worse than unbelievers who have never been born again, what they do? And they still say, I am born again. You grieve the Father. You grieve the Son. You grieve the Holy Ghost. And then it says, those carcasses fell 
in the wilderness. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. They believed first. That's how they came out of the land of captivity. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And they applied the blood on the lintels of their houses. They believed. And then they came into the wilderness. The Red Sea was divided. And out they sang for joy and sang with faith. And water came out of the rock. And they believed. And the manna started coming from heaven. And they believed. But then later they said, this manna. They despised the manna. They belittled the manna. They disrespected the giver. And then they believed not. Verse 19. In verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. We're looking at chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12. We're looking at verse 25. See that she refused not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape much more shall we not escape you know there are people that act as if the new testament gives you liberty to sin and they say the old testament will not allow you to do that you cannot just keep on sinning but now they say because of grace and because his father and because it's jesus the son of his love and because of the Holy Ghost, our comforter, the thing that gives us more liberty to keep on seeing. Look at this. See that she refused not him that speaketh. Present tense. For if they escape not, past tense, who refused past tense, him that spake past tense on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth. But now, but now, but now, in this dispensation, he has promised saying yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Verse 27, and this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaking. As of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Only the man that will not be shaking. The lies of the devil doesn't shake him. And the activities of devil worshippers don't shake him. And the lies and the deception of false preachers who will not keep to the word, they don't change him. Only the people and the things that cannot be shaken will remain. In verse 28, it says, Wherefore, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace after salvation let us have grace after sanctification let us have grace after victory and trial let's still go back to god let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence serve god with reverence serve god with honor Serve God with respect. Not that, you know, we just sing there, sing there, sing there, and then we come, Amen, Hallelujah, I worship and adore you. Who are you talking to? Are you worshiping God or sin? And your conscience is not even prayed. It says, if we're going to serve him acceptably, we come with reverence and godly fear. Verse 29, 
For our God is, not was, even now, 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 the people who relegate his word is standard to the background and they just seen any, any, they're coming from the room of adultery and fornication and they come to take the microphone and they say, praise the Lord. Isn't God good? God is good all the time. God is looking at that person. If you continue like that, you'll perish in hell. He hates sin. And he hates the underman sinner that comes from the place of sin and then comes to the pulpit and is preaching for our God is a consuming fire. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the sanctification for graciously open blood bought servants there are three things we're looking at here number one we're looking at the fellowship of the sanctified saints with the sanctifier number two the faithfulness of sanctified servants in a service number three the forthrightness of sanctified souls to the scripture we're looking at number one number one we're looking at the fellowship of sanctified saints with the sanctifier hebrews chapter 2 verse 11 for both he that sanctifies both he that sanctifies some people tell us to sanctify it was set apart to set apart for holy use and whatever you set apart for holy use must be holy itself. You cannot set neither an abide apart. They are not holy, and then you set them apart for God sanctifies. You cannot set Saul apart after he said, I feared the people, and because I feared the people, I disobeyed the Lord. You cannot say that unholy man apart for the service of the Lord. Neither can you set something sleeping on the Lila's lap. You cannot set him apart for holy use. If you are set apart for holy use, your heart, your mind, your thoughts, your life must be saved. And you must be transparently holy in the sight of the Lord. The fellowship of sanctified saints with the sanctifier for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed before the angels is not ashamed before the father is not ashamed before the world to call them brethren when we're sanctified when we're purged and purified on the inside, on the outside, and there is no guilt, no condemnation, nothing, no slight condemnation. And we know we're sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. Then we can come to God united with Christ the sanctifier. We're looking at John chapter 17, verse 17. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. You're not sanctified by error. You're not sanctified by deception. You're not sanctified by self-deception. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then you repeat it so many times. That one doesn't sanctify. Self-talk. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Your conscience is screaming. And then you keep on repeating, I'm a child. That one doesn't sanctify anybody but the truth of the word of God. The truth that says here is the truth of Christ and the truth personified Christ. If the truth will set you free, you'll be free indeed. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews 13, verse 12, Therefore, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, the blood that saves us, 
the blood that forgave us, the blood that cleansed us, it is in blood that sanctifies us, pure, holy, harmless, spotless, sinless blood. It said Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, so far without the gauge. In verse 13, it says, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. If you are dodging persecution, there's no way you can be sanctified. If you are dodging reproach, if you are dodging the insult of the world, if you are dodging the perplexing activities of backsliders, there's no way you can be sanctified. But when you're ready to bear his reproach and you go on and you say sanctification, holiness, purity of heart, and the ticket to get to heaven is more important for me than anything on earth, that's how we get sanctified. That's our consecration. Then in verse 14, it says, for we have, for here have we no continuing city, but with kids seek one to come. We'll get there in Jesus' name. You will get there in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the faithfulness of sanctified servants in his service. What's faithfulness? Being full of faith in the absence of anybody watching us. Look at me here, a preacher. Let's say my wife is not around. And then I made the vow to her and her only until death do us part. And we cannot be in the same physical place every time. What's faithfulness? My faithfulness is that when she's upset, when she's there's no way she can hear of what I'm doing now, and yet I still do the right thing, the righteous thing. Not because she's there, even when she's not there. That's faithfulness, when you have the word of God. And this is what the word of God says. And whether pastor is there, whether my pastor's wife is there or not, whether your leaders, overseers are there or not, whether there's anyone to challenge you or not, or maybe you have silenced everybody. You have shut the mouth of everyone that he dares not challenge me ah you know faithfulness is when nobody is courageous enough to challenge you and yet you keep faithfully to the word of god that is faithfulness and show me who is a christian a faithful christian today show me who is a faithful minister today show me who is faithful to their vow unto god their consecration unto god their vow to their husband their vow to their wife would they not rather that their wife should be away so they can be free free to sin and free to go to hell. Would they not rather want their husbands to be away, at least to be in the other place, so they can be free, free to sin and free to go to hell. But you know, the faithful people are the people that hold on to the word of God. They have conviction, not because wife, husband, member, minister, overseer, anyone is there, they are committed to the word of God, to every detail, every cross of a T and every dot of an I, and no matter what anybody does and how anybody reacts, he is faithful to the word. That the faithfulness the Lord is talking about, he tells us in Hebrews chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 1, wherefore holy brethren, those are the only kinds of brethren that heaven knows anything about, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Verse 2, in verse 2 it says, who was faithful to him that appointed him. Faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all 
his house. May he see us faithful all the time, everywhere, anytime, in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 2. It tells us in verse 2, moreover, it is required in stewards, all stewards, man or woman, in the morning, in the afternoon, or evening, or night. It is required in stewards that a man and woman be found faithful. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the forthrightness of sanctified souls to the scripture. The forthrightness of sanctified souls to the scriptures. It tells us in a uh, Second Timothy chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. I'm saved, I'm saved. Go beyond that. Study to show thyself approved unto God. I'm an ordained minister. Go beyond that. Study, endeavor. To show yourself approved unto God. Everybody knows me. Everybody knows my service. They know how forthright I am. Go beyond that study. Endeavor. Do everything you can do to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. When we come before the majesty of God on high, when every secret will be opened up, when every hidden thing will be known, then you walk in as a workman, and God looks at your record, and he looks at your face, and he approves of you, and you're not ashamed. That will be the greatest day in your existence in Jesus' name. And then he says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Look up here, you know. If you're not rightly devoting your life to the truth, there's no way you rightly divide the word of truth. Now look, the preacher is a fornicator and he's living in sin or somebody there in the congregation and he comes to preach. He has not repented. He has not made restitution. He has not told that lady Point blank, what we're doing is sinful. If we continued like that, if we died like that, we'll go to hell. It's not done that. And it comes to preach, and it says, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? When it comes to fornication, adultery, he will try to swim around it. He will not be faithful to the word of God. Jesus said, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you've not even touched her. And you've not, um, you know, pressed uh, the delicate part of your body against his body. You've not even done that. If you look on a woman to lost after her, you've committed adultery already in your heart. Now, when you come to that scripture, if you have been loose as a man, as a woman, so-called minister, you will not rightly divide the word of truth. You'll try to manipulate, you'll try to change, you'll try to dodge the real meaning of the word of God. But you know, he wants us to be forthright. He wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be sanctified through and through so that the excellent ministry that he had, you will have in Jesus' name. It says study, 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 endeavor to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed 
rightly dividing the word of truth. The Lord will cleanse us this morning. The Lord will turn our lives around for the better this morning in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it tells us, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone, every minister, Every preacher, every pastor, every evangelist, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from inequity. That's what we are going to do now. I said that's what we are going to do now. And the cleansing power of the blood will take effect in your life in Jesus' name. And then uh, the empowering spirit of God will come in your life. And from today, your ministry will be taken to a higher level in Jesus' name. An excellent minister for an excellent ministry. The Lord confirmed that in every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray and talk to the Lord now and say, Lord, here we are. Here I am. This is what I want to be. And the Lord will confirm it in every life. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that the excellent ministry of Christ will be reproduced in the life of an excellent minister. This is the time of prayer. Close your eyes, open your mouth. Let's go to the Lord in prayers. So that God will give us the spirit of excellence. The compulsory spiritual experiences and excelling minister. Compulsory. Compulsory, not optional. Not if I like, I get them. Check your life and let's pray. As ministers, professionals, leaders, business people, we need spiritual experience to be able to excel in life. And the only lifestyle acceptable to God is holy brethren. Holiness of character, holiness in our lifestyle, holiness in secret, holiness in the open. And that begins with salvation. Let's call upon the Lord. Father, touch me. We cannot be empowered until we are purged, pardoned, purified. God upon the Lord, Father, here am I. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. The supremacy of God's begotten Son, Jesus, supreme to save. It's our Savior. Our Redeemer, our Messiah, and is here to emancipate you. Call upon the Lord, brethren, ministers of the gospel, creatures of God, businessmen, church founders, church leaders. Let's go to God in prayer. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Holiness in powers. Make me holy. Holy in thought. Holy in desire. If you are living in immorality, in adultery, in fornication, 
pray, Lord, deliver me. Forgive me the past. From now, I consecrate myself. Surrender my all. Never to go back to sin. God is no respecter of persons. He is still a consuming fire. He is still a consuming fire. Our position does not re you know, recommend us to him. Is righteousness, uprightness, holiness. Pray. Pray with all your heart. Pray. Pray with all sincerity. How faithful are you? How faithful are you to your marital vow? How faithful are you? Whatever we do in church, there is no freedom from sin. Then, how can we be in fellowship with the Savior? How can we be filled full with the Spirit? Holy Spirit can only fill you when your life is holy. Holy, true, and true. Pray. Others are praying. Why not you? We are here to receive power for more productivity. And that power, the foundation is holiness. And it begins with salvation. Begin with freedom from sin. Begin with total purging. Pray. Pray. Heaven is listening to your prayer. If you have not been born again, why not today? Why not now? Why not call upon the Lord? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you do not pray, how can you receive? How can you be saved? Let us not neglect. You know that salvation is important, but have we gotten it? Sanctification is indispensable. Have we gotten it? You believe that one must be holy. You read it in the Bible without holiness. No man shall see the Lord, but are we holy? Are you holy? Call upon the Lord, my dear sister, brother, friend. Lord, here am I. I will not let you go until you punch me. Until you purify me. What do we do when nobody is watching? What do I do when no eye sees me? How is my thought? How is my talk? How are my actions? Lord, punch. Pray. Isaiah saw himself and he said, I am a man of unclean lips. And Isaiah came and was punched. The punching power in the blood. The pardoning power in the blood can wash you whiter than snow. Experience is purging. The extraordinary power is there. As many have received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He will give you the power today. He will give you the power right here. Power for productivity. Power for usefulness. Power for excelling life, excelling ministry, excelling family. Pray, Lord, here am I. I will not let you go, Father. I will not let you go, Lord. Punch me. Purify me. Empower me. The power can come when they are when you have experienced the pardon, the purging, and you are persevering in holiness, let's call upon the Lord so great a salvation so that you can escape the internal suffering. Remember, God is no respecter of person. We are nothing if we are not pure. Oh, Lord, here am I. I don't want to be a minister and at the end perish. Remember, 
you must not see it in the Lila's lap like Samson. See how he died? He lost his eyes, lost his spiritual connection, lost everything. Samson became empty, died prematurely. Pray, Lord, help me. Brother, pray, pastors, pray. Men of God, pray. Are you a businessman? Pray. Whatever we are in life, grace is available. The blood can purge us, pardon us, purify us. Yes, the more you pray, the more grace you receive. The more you pray, the more grace you receive. Pray with all your heart. Pray fervently. Pray, Lord, I want to be holy. I want to be like Jesus. A disciple cannot be above his master. He that will be perfect must be like his master. Lord, make me like thee. Make me like thee. I want to be holy as thou art holy. I want to be faithful as you are faithful. I want to be pure. Remember, no immoral person can get, no unfaithful person can get to heaven. No unclean person can get to heaven. You don't want to just labor, have a name on earth, have a name in church register, but at the end, hear the master say, I never know you. I never know you. I never know you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Would you like to hear that on the, at the last day? Why not pray, Lord, purge me, pardon me, purify me, pray. The more you pray, touching heaven, the more your life becomes gracious and glorious. Christ is coming for a glorious church, not a backsliding church, not a lukewarm church. Pray, ministers of God. Pray, ministers of gospel. Pray, leaders, workers, singers, ushers, Call upon the Lord. This is not the time to do any other thing. This is the time to pray. Come before the throne of grace. So that you can receive grace for help at the time of need. Pray. Heaven is paying attention. Heaven is at work now in your life. Heaven is at work. Even here today, heaven is at work. Punching. Pardoning, forgiven, purifying every supplicating person. Christ is the supreme one. He paid the supreme price for our redemption. Pray. How can a pastor preach and perish? What is there in immorality? What is there? Why should you allow a Delilah to be controlling your life? To take you away from your wife? Why? Pray. Do not allow any Delilah in the church, any agent of the enemy to come and take pulpit away from you. Even though you are still having the position, but are we still recognized by God. Pray. Pastor, pray. Men of God, pray. Business people, pray. We must never allow evil to come into your family because of immorality. It doesn't matter. The pulpit you occupy, uprightness, holiness, freedom from adultery, Freedom from immorality. Freedom from fornication. Freedom from messing up. Who are hungry? Pray, Lord, set me free. Set me free. Pastor, pray. 
And if there is restitution to make, pray, Lord, give me grace to make restitution. Like Zacchaeus, half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything by false accusation, I will restore it for food. Pray. Are we faithful in the area of money? Money, money, money. Are we faithful? How do we manage money? Or do we spend money anyhow? Because it's church. If we do that in the secular, can we be justified that we misuse church money, God's money? Can you be justified? Pray, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, help me to be faithful. Faithful in ministry. Study to show yourself approved unto God. How is your study in life? How is my study in life? How much do you give to reading your Bible, searching the scripture, studying and praying in private? Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Father, here am I. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. It's not the will of God that any should perish. It's not the will of God that you should perish. Singer, how can you sing and suffer in eternity? We sing holy, holy. And yet, my, your life is not to pray. Lord, punch me. Purify me. I want to be holy. Do not doubt it. Believe it, and you will receive it. Lord, this holiness is what I want. Nothing more. Make me holy. Make me holy. Never believe or listen that nobody can be holy. If you believe it, that means you are doubting God. You are believing man than God. God said, be holy for I am holy. Go to God and say, Lord, make me holy. Make me holy. Make me holy. He will. He will. He will. Let's call upon the Lord. Father, I want to be holy. 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 Pray. He will make you holy. Do not allow any other doctrine that tells you that nobody can be holy. Is that of God? No. God wants us to be holy. Holy in heart. Holy in secret. Holy in the open. Holy at all times. Yes, pray. Pray, pray. Others are praying, pray. Lord, I want to be holy. Lord, I want to remain holy. Lord, I want to be faithful to you. Faithful to God. Faithful in secret. Faithful in the open. I want to be faithful to my creator. I want to be faithful to he that called me. Is God that called you into the ministry? Be faithful to him so that he can use you. If you are not faithful to God, how can God use you? God's hand will remain in your life if you are faithful. Be faithful like Daniel. Be faithful like Isaiah. Be faithful to God in all things like Elijah. Let the fire of faithfulness come upon your life so that you can excel in ministry. Compulsory spiritual experience of an excelling minister. Excelling elder. Excelling pastor. Excelling bishop. Excelling overseer, whatever. Pray, Lord, help me. He will help you. He will surely certainly help you.
the more we pray, the more purer, the more purging. Little prayer we mean little strength. The more you pray, the more grace you receive. The more his hand will be upon you, the more purer you become. The reason for the weakness of the church is prayerlessness. The reason for the weakness in the church is sinful lifestyle, immoral lifestyle, unfaithful lifestyle. Pray, Lord, I want to be faithful to you in all things. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. We become weak spiritually, ministerially, if we do not have abundance of his grace. If we do not have the abundance of his grace and power. Say the Lord, I surrender all. Raise your hand, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Unto thee, my Savior, I surrender all. Raise your hand and surrender all. Surrender all to Jesus. Surrender your life. Surrender your ministry. Surrender your family. Surrender everything. Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all to you. I need your grace to remain steadfast. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender. I lay all on the altar. I lay my life on the altar. I lay myself on the altar. Lord, let your grace come in abundance upon my life. Lord, I surrender all. Surrender everything. Surrender everything. Don't hold back. Do not hold back anything. Surrender. 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 And the blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. We purge your conscience, purge your heart, and give you the divine enablement to excel in ministry. All over the world, all over the world, surrender, surrender. Every minister. Watching, connecting, surrender, surrender. Wherever you are watching us from, wherever you are connecting from, in all the congregations, surrender all to the Lord. In America, Europe, Asia, Africa, everywhere, surrender. Caribbean, Pacific, everywhere you are, Australia, surrender all. This is the time of surrendering everything. Surrendering your life. Telling the Lord, I voluntarily surrender. Pastor, pray. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Men may respect you, but if there is no holiness, God will not respect you. Lord, I surrender. I surrender my heart, my ambition, my thoughts, everything. I surrender and lay all on the altar. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to pray together as we round off. Lay your hand on your chest and say, Jesus, take over this heart of mine. Lord Jesus, take over this heart of mine. Lord Jesus, take over. Purify it. Make it pure. Make it pure. Make it white. Whiter than snow. This heart of mine. I don't want evil there. don't want evil to emanate from there anymore. My heart purify. I surrender this heart of mine. I give you my heart. In Jesus' name, we pray it. Father, we bless your name.
thank you for this message, timely message that you have sent to your people, to us, your children. And Lord, you have shown us that there is compulsory Christian experiences before we can receive that power to excel, that power to become more productive, that power to fly, that power to be like Elijah, Elisha, and other men of God, even greater, that power to be like our Savior. Lord, I pray that this day, everyone here and all over the world, in Ghana, in Africa, countries, Kenya, all over the world, in America, in Europe, in London, everywhere, Lord, where we are consecrating together, but if there is any sin or backsliding, Lord, this day, let there be restoration. Yeah. Let there be regeneration. Yeah. Let there be full redemption in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I pray, dear Lord, that nobody, no matter who, will leave this hall or those who are outside or anywhere will live here as a sinner. Yeah. All sins, Lord, as they have confessed, forgive them. Wash them with the blood of Jesus. Make them clean and pure in the name of Jesus. Father, for those who have been in the faith before, but along the way, they had spiritual accident. Even if their hands are broken, eyes removed like that of Sansa, Father, you have the power of restoration. When the prodigal son came back, he was received. Oh, Lord, receive them back. Yeah. Receive them back. Yeah. Restore them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That, Lord, I pray that whatever they have done, as they wandered in the wilderness, going to the far country, Lord, let there be forgiveness. Yeah. Let there be full restoration in Jesus' name. The power to remain stable. The power to remain sound. The power to remain faithful. Father, give to them now. Yeah. And I also pray for those who have not been faithful, either in money matters, maybe using church money for personal thing, or who have not been faithful to their wives, faithful to their marital vow, maybe they have had, you know, extramarital relationship with a woman or a man. Lord, grace to restitute. Amen. Give to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe in their places of work. Maybe with their business partners. Maybe what, in whatever area they have been unfaithful. And they needed to restitute to ratify things. Lord, I pray from today Grace to do that. Like Zacchaeus. He said, half of my goods I give to the poor. If I'm standing anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore. Lord, grace to make full restitution. Give to them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, we believe in the Bible. We believe your word. And heaven and earth may pass away, not a title will pass on for field. And your words say, be ye holy, for I, the Lord God, I am holy. For the peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Father, today, the grace for consistent holiness, the grace for perpetual holiness, the grace to be upright every time, give to us all in the name of Jesus. The power to excel. The power to be more productive. The power to succeed. Bestow upon your children in the name of Jesus. No more stumbling block. No more load block. No more rising and falling. From today, upward, forward, ever. Do we 
it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we know that this is just the beginning. We're coming back on Monday. We're coming back on Tuesday. Lord, is going to be great. Amen. For all the ministers and workers that we are not here today, Lord, by Monday, we will not only have a full house of having now, there's going to be real speed over. Confirm it. Amen. Father, confirm it. Amen. For your servant you used to minister to us today, our beloved daddy, our beloved pastor that you have sent to us, Pastor Dr. Dr. Kumi, Lord, grace. Amen. Greater grace. Amen. More anointing. Amen. As you were with Moses, that his natural force never abated. His eyes was never dim. So, do for your servant. Amen. Greater strength give to him in Jesus' name. Amen. Strengthen our mother in the Lord too. Amen. And I'm praying, King of glory, that as we'll be going, O oh Lord, your grace will go with us. Amen. All we receive today, we will never lose. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you believe God has touched you and you have received the grace and the power for productivity, give me a greater amen. amen. God bless you, please. We can have our seats. Let's have our seats. We thank God today is just the beginning of the ministers, professionals, and business executive conference. And the, the meeting will continue on Monday, on Monday by 8 a.m. Please, all other pastors that were not here with us and Christian workers and ministers, please let us invite them and encourage them. Share with them your testimony today. And not only that, this evening we'll be at Opera Square for another explosive miracle crusade. This evening, 5 p.m. Let's be there before 5 and invite your family members and others and I believe God that will never remain the same. Your amen is good but it can be greater. Yeah. Also, I want to tell us tomorrow is going to be special for the youths, our children, our daughters and sons. Tomorrow is going to be Impact Academy. It combines both academics and a lot of things together. An Impact Academy tomorrow is 8 a.m. at Opera Square. 8 o'clock at Opera Square is going to be such that will be unforgettable. Let's ensure that all our children, our youths are there on time. And the Lord, as we were having the program, a lot of dignitaries came in. We will, you know, we will recognize them briefly now, some of them that came in after. And many also, please, if we are not able to recognize you today, by Monday, we will surely do that. The people that came in while the message was going on is Chris Chibuike Joshua C. Is El Shaddai Christian Life Chapel. <laughs> Sir, where is he? You are welcome, sir. God bless you. Then we have Reverend Chuku Nenye Levi, Stewards of Grace Ministry. Sir, you are welcome, sir. We have Reverend Joseph 
Alpha May Fuller, head pastor, preparation for Christ ministry. Are you there, sir? Okay, God bless you. Now, Pastor Amadiane Uzochuku, Revival Time Mission, Amage. <laughs> Sir? God bless you. Then we have Leo, that's Pastor Leo Pastor of Shekai Assembly International Church. Leo. Thank you. Now, Bishop Vincent Diolu, Bishop Joseph, Bishop Vincent Diolu, please. God bless you, God bless you. Bishop, Thank you. Bishop Joseph Ajujungwa of Khan. Bishop Joseph Ajujungwa. God bless you. There are others who are not able to get your name. Please. Can we please rise up? All the other uh, Pentecostal and uh, you know, all the other camp ministers. Please, please, we will recognize it formally next time, but please, can we stand up? God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Sorry, we couldn't get your name. By the special grace of God, on Monday, we'll give you full recognition. Thank you. Remember, on Monday, we'll be coming back here by... Eight in the morning. Please, let's endeavor to come on time. Seven thirty, possibly, so that we start with prayer, and then eight we start on the door, so that we do not close late. God bless you. See you at the crusades today. Remember, the crusade is five p.m. God bless you. Thank you.
the Lord has a vessel he is using. And that is our Jesus, our great man of God, whom the Lord has been using to sharpen us, to revive us. Let's bless the name of the Lord for him. Constant strength, additional grace, sufficient grace. In fact, Jesus Christ told Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Let's thank the Lord for his sufficient grace upon his life, upon his wife too. Let's worship the Lord. Today begins the first day of this minister's conference. Power for productivity in his service. Let's also worship the Lord because today wonders will take place. The weak shall be made strong. Even the ministers and church workers that are no more focused today, there'll be revival, there'll be restoration. There be fruitfulness. Let's worship the Lord in advance because all of us are going to live here today being renewed. You can't go the way you came. No. You can't go the way you came. The Lord is willing, the Lord is able to sharpen us. And we have come into the potter's house and he is going to break us. He is going to melt us. He is going to remold us and put us into circulation. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. Let's now call upon the Lord. If there's no peace in our nation, if there's any trouble anywhere, we will not be able to gather here this day and other programs. Let's call upon the Lord and ask the Lord, who is the governor general of every nation, that he will give us peace. Peace in Enugu State. Peace in Southeast. Peace in Nigeria. Peace in Africa. Peace in the whole world. Let's worship. The, let us uh, pray and call upon the Lord. We need his grace. Let's pray. Let's pray. We pray in Jesus' name. Let's also call upon the Lord. Our GS, the convener of this program, we know he's a human being. Let's ask for sufficient grace upon him. Let's ask for additional grace, multiplied grace, marvelous grace upon him. It will mount from strength to strength, from energy to energy. Let's call upon, his, upon the Lord for our general superintendent. No weakness, no tiredness. And the Lord will put his word in his mouth. He will not lack utterances. He will not lack inspiration. 